Good evening. Welcome to Renew US Live, PJNet hashtag rally. Many of you have been waiting uh, for the highly acclaimed guest that we have standing by via Skype in our studio. But if you think you've been waiting where he is at, it is 2.30 in the morning. <laughs> he is in the United Kingdom. Um, folks, before I introduce him, let me take a moment to just give God uh, credit and as well as Sunbelt Girl. Uh, you may have seen in the chat room, if you were here live, uh, that Sunbelt Girl had a evangelist uh, preaching in her church last week. And she's very excited about that evangelist and has even connected uh, us with him. And we hope to have him in the near future. But that evangelist has a son. Now, you've actually already seen him because we just showed one of his solo videos, but he was also uh, in one of the previous videos appearing and performing with the Hoppers. Now, I, the world would say that this is coincidental, and eh, it could be, but I would prefer to think that it is providential because uh, our mission here uh, in Renew US and virtually everything that is done uh, here at PJNet is to solve the spiritual condition, the spiritual problem in our country. Yes, we wage war legislatively, but we can't pass laws to fix the brokenness and the darkness and the sin in our culture. If we will solve the spiritual problem, most of the other problems will go away. Okay, you've waited long enough. Uh, Nathan, Come on in our studio here and have a seat, and uh, <laughs> it is so good to have you. Um, you have so many ministries, I don't really know where to start, but, but I, in, in case we run out of time later, tell us about Hope to the Hill and how you got involved, and tell us exactly what that is. Sure. Uh, well, Hope to the Hill is a, a Christian ministry we spend... Uh, much time uh, with members of Congress uh, sharing the gospel with them, uh, and uh, most of my days are spent uh, in Washington, D.C., in and out of uh, different offices of members, and uh, we go in uh, and try to build uh, bridges, uh, build relationships, friendships with them uh, and their staff, uh, especially, in hopes that we can uh, better uh, serve them and, and, and pray for them. But uh, our number one goal is to share the gospel with them. We're not a, uh, a partisan group. We're a nonpartisan group, which means that uh, we uh, will work with either side. We love to share the gospel with all people. Uh, but we, we really have uh, tried to uh, let them know that uh, we're a nonpartisan group, so we don't typically uh, come out in support of certain candidates, things like that. We want every member of Congress to feel um, like they can call on us if they need to. But uh, we, uh, well, for years, uh, I grew up traveling uh, with my dad. As you said, he's an evangelist. and So I spent uh, 18, almost 19 years on the road with him uh, singing with my family. And I left the road uh, when I was about 19 years old. And I actually started singing gospel music and uh, sang with a group called the Neelands back in the day, and then uh, I actually went to Bible college, uh, finished there, and I, I was back on the road again with uh, the Hoppers for the last few years. But uh, oh, during that time, uh, the Lord had uh, allowed, <clears throat> uh, providentially had allowed my father and I to be able to work in ministry together on Capitol Hill, and that was in my, my off time, uh, and the Lord provided uh, the, the funds at that time through music to be able to uh, work in Washington, D.C., and it was really on a part-time basis. So uh, over the past uh, few years, I really felt that the Lord was leading that uh, leading us to step into a more full-time role in Washington, D.C. And so last year, we went to the board of my father's uh, ministry, Hope Ministries International, and asked that they would uh, try to help us figure out a way that I could be in D.C. full-time. So as of last February, uh, I actually came off of the road and um, have not been singing full-time. Uh, previously have been doing about 220 concerts a year. So I came, came off the road full-time, and I've been in Washington, D.C. Uh, full-time, which it takes being, uh, being there full-time. It's very important because 
uh, a week in Washington, D.C. is like uh, a million years. I like to tell people a lot of time, if you, uh, if you are gone for more than a week, uh, people tend to forget uh, who you are, wh what you do. And so the, the um, continuous nature of us being there is very, very important to build those relationships that are so vital uh, to our ministry. And uh, I know some Belt Girls just uh, said uh, they've done three tank crusades in the mall uh, and in the Pentagon. And uh, that was early on, 2002, four and seven. My dad uh, felt the Lord was calling him to do uh, in 2002 first a, a tent crusade on the Washington, or the Washington Mall, the National Mall, in front of the Washington Monument. And God, uh, really, that was the beginning of our ministry there is God opened up so many wonderful doors into the Pentagon uh, and into the Congress. And so we're so thankful uh, for everything that God has allowed us to do and take part in. But at, at the end of the day, it's about uh, saving souls, trying to lead uh, folks to Christ uh, and trying to uh, change the heart of people in hopes that uh, that our nation will come back to the Lord. You know, Nathan, when we were uh, speaking earlier today, I, I get this feeling that we are both uh, in, in a very similar mission doing very dissimilar things. Because uh, when when I call upon members of Congress, well, first of all, you have to weave through the gatekeepers and all that, you know, and that's a right. process. I won't go into all that. But the, sure. but the funny thing is, is once I am, uh, if I'm able to connect with uh, usually the communications director, uh, the right. usual question is, what do you want? You know, because right. uh, that's right. why they have these gatekeepers is everybody wants something. Correct. And and I say, well, you know, we're here to support this particular legislative agenda and support the congressman uh, in that role. And, and it kind of takes them back because usually they're called upon to hear complaints or to be persuaded. Uh, your your experience is very similar. It's just instead of electronic, you're you're there, you know, pressing the flesh. Tell us about that. Yeah, well, I, you know, that's something that, that is very, very important. We found that, uh, you know, going in, I, I guess we were talking today, you know, earlier uh, this afternoon, or I guess it was morning for morning you. Morning for me. <laughs> afternoon for me. Uh, you know, I, I've had a, some interesting experiences. I'll tell you about two uh, quickly, but uh, one uh, just a few weeks ago, and this is a pretty common occurrence uh, for me. Uh, I went into an office of a member of Congress that I had actually not met yet. He was a new member of Congress. And uh, so, you know, they're bombarded, especially the, we have 60 new members uh, this year in the 115th Congress. And um, so most of them have become uh, knowledgeable quickly of how things work and how people come in expecting something from them or, or asking something of them. So I was uh, able to, to circumvent and get around and get uh, through the scheduler and uh, sit down with him for a minute. And he said, well, what can I do for you, uh, sir? And I said, well, um, nothing uh, really, except for I would like to know how I can pray for you today. What can I do uh, for you? And he kind of slouched back in his chair and looked at me with, with shock. And he began to, uh, to share some very personal things that he was struggling with with his family and so we've always found it to be very interesting you know uh, members of congress uh, staff members they let their guard down when they realize that you are there to uh to try to help them to pray for them and uh you know in uh, there are no atheists in foxholes as they say and in congress uh that is is definitely especially right now with where our country is uh, it has definitely been a, a battle, a, a battleground. And so most of these men, what, no matter what side they're on, uh, are struggling with something and they welcome uh, prayer. So that's the first thing. Um, I am finding, I think, probably one of the, the most interesting things, and uh, people can call it, uh, they call it a lot of different things, but uh, the Trump effect has been one of those things. Um, it has been interesting to see how members of Congress, especially Christian members of Congress, who have for so long uh, played their faith close to the chest, they have not uh, been extremely vocal, uh, you know, outside of the four walls of their, their own personal office, um, to see them come out and, and, and uh, publicly, uh, more publicly, uh, share their faith and uh, to 
uh, speak out on things that must be spoken about. Uh, I was um, there's a video online somewhere uh, you may be able to find it uh, the week prior to uh, the president, our new president, uh, Donald Trump, taking office. Uh, we spent some time praying over the the walkway, anointing the doorway that he would walk through out onto the inaugural platform. And uh, we had a certain congressman that I, I can't name. Uh, he asked to remain nameless, but uh, I, we called him and he gladly, gladly uh, took us to the place where the president would walk through. And uh, the the uh, when we got to that, that spot, it was covered because uh, it was just a few days prior to the inauguration. It was uh, covered with police officers and, and the officers told us we couldn't get near the door. We couldn't even walk within 10 feet of the door. And the congressman said, uh, well, you know what, we uh, I'm going to let them pray there. I told them they could. And the uh, officer said, oh, I absolutely cannot let you uh, walk past this point. And uh, I saw something very interesting. The congressman, who was a very short man, uh, walked up to the, the burly officer and got in his face. They were chest to chest. And uh, and he, he was poking his chest out of the officer and he was looking up at the officer and he was uh, whispering something to him. I still don't know what it was he said to him. And he was pushing the officer, walking towards him, pushing him back against the wall. And the officer finally said, fine, you win, Congressman. Uh, you can go <laughs> and, and to the doorway. And uh, that Congressman, uh, you know, uh, really put uh, himself on the line for us to be able to go and pray in that very spot. And it was a really, really special uh, moment to be able to pray for the president. Just a few days later, I watched. I was in at the front uh, of the audience out in front of the Capitol watching as he walked through that doorway that we had just prayed for. Um, so it was, that was really neat. But the, the most encouraging part for me was after that, the congressman said, I would really like to take you up to uh, the Congressional Prayer Chapel for a few moments. And we ended up spending almost an hour in there. And he sat there uh, and, and shared some things with us, some exciting things. And uh, but I, I asked him, you know, how can we pray for you today? And he he named a few things. And as he was naming the things he wanted us to pray for, he was pulling a small New Testament out of his back pocket and he uh, held it up. He said, you know what, this this is what gets me uh, through the days here in Washington, D.C. He said, I, I truly do need prayer for wisdom. And I said, well, can we pray for you right now? And he said, absolutely. And he stood up out of the chair and we all started to stand up because I thought we were going to stand up, and maybe hold hands and pray. But he stood up and uh, he did something very, very encouraging to me. He, he lay down almost completely flat on the floor and uh, and and prostrate in front of the Lord. And we laid our hands on him and prayed over him. And that was something that I had never seen before. It was one of those moments, you know, that you, you'll never forget as long as you live to have a U.S. congressman who. Uh, was so in love with the Lord and so um, uh, disconcerted for our nation that he would lay and prostrate in front of the Lord begging uh, for mercy for our, our great land. So I am encouraged, and so many others, uh, we're all very encouraged at what God is doing on Capitol Hill. But the things uh, that I tell people we, we must have is that we pray for our members of Congress. We let them know that we're praying for them no matter what side of the aisle that they are on, uh, that we encourage them uh, where we can encourage them and that we would pray for them consistently because uh, we know that uh, the Lord holds the heart of the king in his hand. And so he can turn the hearts of men whichever way that he chooses to do so. Um, but we, we ask that, that uh, you would pray for us, for our ministry. And uh, God is doing miraculous things. I firmly believe that we are right on the edge, the precipice of a, a third great awakening. And so I, I'm just really encouraged to see what God is doing. Nathan, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm almost speechless. I, you are an answer to prayer. Okay. You are our ambassador in the very halls of the United States Congress. And, and I just want to let you know that, that you, what you just described is exactly what we have been praying for, what we are trying to do, and, and we want to to throw any and every support that we can behind, not you personally, it's your mission, it's your calling, it's the work of the Lord. And I am encouraged. And, you know, it's been a long time since I have said that. 
And well, I am just very encouraged. Nathan, you are a, a warrior on the front lines of, of the spiritual battle that's taking place, being played out among other places, but Washington, D.C. Well, I, you know, I told you today, I, I firmly believe, I've, I've been reading the story of, of, uh, of Jonah and Nineveh just recently again, and um, I, I am encouraged, and I, I, my prayer is this, is that uh, as a nation, just like in uh, the great city of Nineveh, uh, the Bible says that from the kings, the lowest man, uh, they repented, and uh, that was a, a sign of national repentance from the, the greatest to the lowest. And so my prayer uh, has been that we would have a similar thing happen in the United States of America. And I truly believe that God has granted us some space, uh, even having Mike Pence as vice president. He's a, a godly man, a wonderful man, and has been the recipient of the, uh, the Christian Statesmanship Award from the Center for Christian Statesmanship in Washington, um, and I truly believe that, that God is granting us some space. So my prayer, and I hope that your prayer is in the coming days, that we would have a national repentance from the top to the very bottom. And, and that is something that I, I firmly, firmly believe uh, will happen. Nathan, um, I, I wish we had an hour. First of all, thank you for staying up so late uh, oh, <laughs> to, to, to share with us. Uh, I, I know that we are all encouraged and we want to be an encouragement to you. And I hope that we can continue this dialogue. It's my understanding that your father will be joining you in England next week. Yeah, well, so uh, some people have been asking, why are you not in Washington, D.C. right now? There's a lot going on. I was up until about a week and a half ago. And uh, I, I am in England right now. Um, I've had some meetings, work, Washington, D.C. related meetings, where we uh, are trying to expand in the collegiate uh, area in Oxford, uh, England here, and I have some colleagues that, that are um, in Oxford, uh, one specifically that's a, a headmaster at one of the colleges at Oxford. So I spent some time here, and then I've been singing some, and my dad will be flying over um, this coming Tuesday, and uh, he and I will be uh, ministering together at a youth conference um, here in Birmingham, England, uh, starting the the following uh, Wednesday, or the, well, the Wednesday after he the day after he gets into England, actually. So, um, but it's it's going to be a really really uh, wonderful wonderful time. It's uh, there are students from all over Europe that fly in for this conference, and we'll probably have about 150 uh, college age uh, young people. And you, you have to understand only 2%, and they, they think maybe even less than that, of the English population even attend church. Mm. Uh, and, you know, whether it's really a, a Bible-believing uh, church could be considerably mm -hmm. less than that. So when you look at that, uh, that scale, there are not many uh, people that, that are a part of a, a Bible-believing church in the country of England or in Europe. So 150 young people is like, uh, you know, the amount of people that go to Passion Conference, you know, in Atlanta, uh, that, that's a great deal of young people for this country. And so we're encouraged as this conference has grown. These kids love the Lord, and we're trying to do our best to encourage them. And it's something that I've been a part of for, for years now. Um, and so that's why I'm here right now, and I will be heading back to D.C. I was uh, a part of um, the president's announcement um, the, actually, the day, the night before I left to come here uh, for Judge Gorsuch, and um, so that that will be uh, continuing on mm -hmm. the uh, process, confirmation process, when I get back, and um, obviously is going on right now as the judge is, is meeting with members of Congress. So this is a very interesting time. If you don't know any any of the historical aspect of how that works. As the when a, a judge is nominated to potentially be a justice, he goes around and meets with different members of Congress, and that can take some time. Mm -hmm. uh, but what I'm praying in that case is that we have a swift confirmation for this judge. I mean, people on both sides of the aisle uh, agree that he is an honorable man, that he he loves the law, and uh, but also I, I believe he's a, a Christian guy. So um, I'm really excited to see what what God uh, does there, and that would be a huge, huge. Um, a huge thing um, with respect to 
uh, Justice Antonin Scalia's passing last year. He, I was actually sitting in the chair uh, yesterday where I was sitting a year ago when I found out that Justice Scalia passed away and uh, what a dear, uh, dear man he was. So it's uh, the judge, Judge Gorsuch, has great shoes to fill, mm -hmm. uh, the shoes of Justice Scalia, and we are encouraged at uh, what the president has done so far as far as uh, choosing Judge Gorsuch. And uh, so we ask you to continue to pray that, uh, that God would clear a path uh, for his uh, confirmation, that it would be quickly so that we can get uh, back to getting things done, the daily routine. Um, so that, that's a huge, a huge prayer request for us. Nathan, I, I, I'm just I'm blown away, and just God bless you, and uh, I hope that he anoints your work, and, and just know that we are praying for you and with you, and uh, our ministry is to help yours. So, Nathan, thanks for staying up late tonight. Oh, anytime, my friend. And one other thing, Sunbelt Girl did ask, uh, she wanted me to share about the Ten Commandments uh, we have outside of our office. If you ever come to D.C. and you're more than welcome to come, we'd love to have you if you're ever in the area. I'd love to show you around. Uh, we have a, an 840-pound uh, Ten Commandment uh, monument. And it, uh, if you know, if you've been to the Supreme Court of the United States, you know, we share a, an office building uh, or a, a row house in Washington with our sister ministry, which is Faith in Action, and they actually own the building. We, uh, I, we rent office space from them, but we do everything together. Our ministries are intertwined, and uh, Faith and Action's ministry is to the Supreme Court justices. It's a missions organization to the Supreme Court, but uh, right, we're right behind. If you walk out the back door of the Supreme Court, you walk right across the street, almost into our front door of the office. But we have a Ten Commandments monument outside, and uh, we, we wanted that to be a testament of, of uh, the Lord there, and uh, it's been pushed over, it's been kicked. Um, we've had a lot of people who have tried to remove it, uh, but it is it is still uh, standing there. And uh, a few, uh, at least one of our United States Supreme Court justices, uh, a few times a week, I won't name him by name, but um, one of them stops by a few days a week and prays in front of that monument early in the morning. And so just know, be encouraged that uh, I think a lot of people uh, have Elijah syndrome. And I've, I've been guilty of it myself at times, but we feel so many times that God, uh, or that we're the only ones left, that we're the only ones that are standing for what is right. But uh, don't ever feel that way. Um, in those moments where I feel that way, the Lord reminds me of, of the many thousands of Christians there are just in, in uh, working within the walls of government, but also great Christian ministries on Capitol Hill. So be encouraged that, that we have more Christians in Congress right now than we've had in the past 150 years. So God is doing something very special, and we have wonderful Christians in not only in Congress, but in uh, the Supreme Court, in the White House. There are great people who love the Lord, uh, who are trying to give great uh, advice to our president. So be encouraged of that and continue to pray for them as we are on a daily basis because they need it. There is a great fight. I keep telling folks, uh, don't don't think we've won anything by winning the election. I hear people say that a lot. They say, well, we won, we won. I say, we haven't won anything. Uh, we, you just punched uh, the progressive movement in the face, and uh, they're a little angry, or really angry now. <laughs> so the fight is on. The fight is on for what between... Uh, good and evil and what is true um, and what God's word says and what the world wants. So we, we must be praying. We must be diligent in prayer. And uh, that's that's what I would leave you with tonight. Full armor, my brother. Thank you so much for sharing with us yes, tonight. Sir. We can't wait to hear more. Yes, sir. God bless you, my friend. God bless you all. And uh, hope to hope to talk to you soon.